Kia ora, hello on the evening of Leap Day 2024, February 29th, kind of cool, Leap Day. Uh, what I want to do here today in this video is see, see the four formulae from NZQA, set out the symbol systems, there are two of them in use in the world, and uh, prove the four formulae in order with pause points, so if you use it in class or you want to write them down, you uh, don't have a big hurry to hit the pause button. Right, I'm moving along here. If we look at the 2023 uh, NCEA 2 physics paper, and that's a resource booklet little snip I took, there are these four formulae here, and I'll move my face up out of the way. Um, we've got the top row on the left. The velocity is a change in displacement over time, which is pretty much taught in year 10. Acceleration is change in velocity over time, year 11. Then the next four. V equals VI plus AT on the right hand side at the top, then the other three which I'm not going to read out. I'm just going to prove them and show you what they are and where they came from. Um, I'm going to roll along here and move my face back down out of the way. Uh, the rest of the world uses S for displacement, so it's different from D for distance and D for diameter. Um, and NZQA sticks, sticks with D for the whole lot. I will look at the two velocities, the final and the initial. The rest of the world uses V for final velocity, and just before the final velocity is initial velocity, just before V in the alphabet is U, but we've got V sub I and V sub F. Um, the acceleration is the same, it has the same symbol as lowercase a, and T the same symbol for time elapsed, just T. If we have this graph here, which is a generic all-purpose graph of velocity of time, We've got the velocity on the vertical axis, which is um, got the initial velocity and then the high, higher one is the final velocity. And on the horizontal, we go from start zero out to a time, some time t, just call it t. And we're going to be using that. Uh, down the bottom, I'll have put the four formulae uh, plus the two earlier ones from NZQA. Now we know that the slope or gradient of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. It comes from the definition of acceleration, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So acceleration is a rise over the run. The acceleration is Vf minus Vi, which is just the height of the triangle on the top. Um, so we've just got Vf minus Vi, that's the increase. So come back to here. Then what I'm going to do is make a complicated step called swapping sides. Vf minus Vi, Vi divided by T is equal to A, and then multiply both sides by T. You get AT on the right-hand side, and the divided by T, multiply by T, undo each other on the left. Now that formula there, I want you to hold on to that. If it's in class, perhaps you might write it on a board as a pause point. Vf minus Vi equals AT, and we'll hold on to that in our memory. Then I'm going to add Vi to both sides. On the left-hand side, I've already got minus VI, and then I add VI, and those two things undo each other. And then I'm finished off with VF is equal to VI plus AT, which is a formula on the top right-hand side in the small box there. That's the first of the four formulae I want to prove in this video. This is a good place to pause, so I'll be moving the video along um, and be giving you a pause point here. Moving along in three, two, one, cool. Moving along. Average velocity is displacement divided by time, so we can swap that around. Displacement is equal to the average velocity times time. The average velocity is the start and finish, add them together, divided by how many there are, two, multiplied by t, and that's the formula that we're looking for next. Uh, and it's in that little rectangle that we've got um, from the NZQA. Uh, and if we go back a little bit, we see it down um, in the middle at the bottom. There it is there. Uh, and uh, this is a, a good interim pause point, but I'm going to be coming back to it in a moment. So moving along in three, two, one, cool, moving along. Now that's the maths part. The physics part, what's going on here, is that if we've got this graph, or this chart here, velocity time graph, there's Vi, V sub F, it goes up. The average velocity is in the middle there. What we're looking for is actually the area of this rectangle underneath this average velocity line. And if I've got the drawing made right, maybe I don't, this little half triangle on the top right hand side, if we put a hinge there, made a cut through here, made a cut underneath it and a hinge in the middle, we could pick it up 
and tip it upside down and drop it into the triangle there on the left. So we finish up with the rectangle where the area under is the average velocity times the time. That's kind of cool. Now then we could also look at the um, area under slightly differently. We could look at it as being um, the area at the bottom and the rectangle there, which is vi times t, height times width, and the area of the triangle on the top, which is half times base times height, which is half times the base, which is t, and the height, which is the difference of those two velocities. Then we could uh, write them out again. Yeah, the distance is the area, bottom rectangle plus top triangle, vi there plus a half times t times vf minus vi. But pulling out, the, out of your memory or from a board, if you've written it down, vf minus vi is equal to a times t. So where we have the uh, bracket with the subtraction, we can write down a times t. So vi t plus a half t r times a t. Click little like terms together. D is equal to VIT plus a half times A times T times T or T squared. And that's what we wanted. And that's the formula on the formula sheet. And uh, this is a good place for me to pause. So you can stop and write it down if you wish. Moving along in three, two, one. Moving along. Cool. We have one to go. And this is this, that is this one here. Well, we already have VF equals VI plus AT. And all we need on the left hand side is a square. So uh, have a look at this. We, we square both sides, everything on both sides. Left side, VF squared. Right hand side, we've got that. It's expanded out. Um, VF squared. Now, I know we're supposed to do it as foil, but I haven't done it as foil. I've done first VI squared, and then the inner, uh, AT times VI, and then the uh, outer, AT times VI again. Plus the last, a squared, t squared. Sorry about that, I didn't get it quite right. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the order's not that important. And then what I'm going to do is rearrange the uh, order of the middle ones. Instead of having a t times v i, I'm going to have uh, a v times a v i times t. So I'm going to rearrange those two middle ones. a times v i times t. And then gather them up, there's two of them, so there's two times A times VI times T, and then the last one there, I'm going to do something a wee bit odd, you might be wondering what that's for, but there's a reason for it, two times a half is one, I've multiplied by one, I haven't changed anything, but there's a, there's a handy thing there, the last two groups of terms have got a two in them, and that's useful, I want to pull out the two as a common factor, They've also got an a. There's another a here. So if we take out two as a common, two and a as a common factor, we're left here with the vi times t. There it is. We pull out two and one of the a's. We're left with a half times one of the a's times t squared, which is cool. But then we also know that vi times t plus a half a t squared is equal to d. We just proved that, so we can write that in there. And I've just pulled up the uh, the little slot from the top up there. VF squared is VI squared plus 2AD. So we've proven uh, the bottom three equations of the top right hand side and the previous two up the top there. Uh, the top left hand one, velocity is a change in displacement over time, year 10. Acceleration is change in velocity over change of time, year 11. And the other four, year 12. Thank you for your time. I hope this is useful. Cheers, everybody.